Okay, so we have seen how if you have given a system of equations, you know, the row reduction is, is uh, a very general and powerful method. But if you have a system of equations which is equation which is square in nature, right? If the number of unknowns is equal to uh, the number of equations, then you can use, you know, the determinant method. And if the determinant of the matrix of coefficients is non-zero, then you have the Kramer's rule which can be used, right? So we had a discussion about this. So in this lecture, we will look at a class of linear equations which are called homogeneous linear equations. Okay, so a system of equations becomes homogeneous if all the constant terms on the right hand side are zero, right? So, so I'm looking at a system of equations of this kind. So I have a11, x1, da, 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 so on is equal to zero. Then again, the second equation, a21, x1, so on, all the variables appear on the left hand side as the usual uh, convention is and is equal to the constant on the right hand side is zero. So every single equation must have a constant which is zero on the right hand side. If this happens, then you say that such a system of equations is homogeneous. So, so an important uh, you know, aspect of homogeneous equations is that they are never inconsistent. They always have at least one solution, which you may think of as a trivial solution, right? Which is simply put all the x's, x1, x2, x3, all of them to be zero. It is clear that this solution will, will always exist. So the question is, is this the it is is this solution the unique solution or not? Right? Sometimes this solution becomes the unique solution for a homogeneous set of equations. So that we will uh, look at now in this uh, discussion. Now, since the, the last column of this augmented matrix is zero, so it is evident that the rank of the augmented matrix must be the same as that of the coefficient matrix, right? Because the last column basically contributes nothing, right? So if you think of this way of computing the rank of a matrix using determinants, so you can, for, for all practical purposes, you can just ignore that the last column has any information at all. It doesn't have, right? So, in, therefore, the rank of your augmented matrix necessarily is equal to the rank of your uh, matrix of coefficients. So, which immediately implies from our earlier discussion that this is a system of equations which is always consistent, right? So, now a particularly important case is when it's also a square system. Not only is it homogeneous, the system of equations which is homogeneous, right? Every homogeneous set of equations is always consistent. Now it doesn't matter whether it's square or not. But now if this homogeneous set of equations is also square, which means the number of equations is equal to the number of variables, then, then we can find its determinant, right? So we have this condition. If your so the trivial solu solution becomes the only solution if you are able to find this determinant and find that it's non-zero, right? So the trivial solution is always a solution. Now whether you, so either this is you know a unique solution or you have infinitely many solutions. You have another uh, in addition to this there are many other solutions, right? So that can happen if uh, if the rank of the matrix of if if, if this determinant of this coefficient matrix, right? I am thinking that it is a square system. If it is non-zero, then this is a unique solution. The trivial solution is the solution. It is a unique solution and there are infinitely many solutions. So if this happens, then the determinant of the coefficients must go to zero. So a system of n homogeneous equations in un n unknowns has solutions other than the trivial solution if and only if the determinant of the coefficients is zero. Right, so this is an important result. Right, we will make use of this result, uh, you know, in in later discussions on you know linear dependence and so on. So the whole point is that we have had this detour into you know matrices, determinants, rank, and all this, so that we will use some of these ideas in our discussion of abstract linear vector spaces, uh, crucially in the context of linear vector spaces. But before I sign off this lecture, let me make one more point about you know, systems of linear equations and how one can give a geometric interpretation to these problems, right? So it is best understood in terms of just a two by two system, right? So you have a1x plus a2x plus 
x equal to c1 and d, d1 x plus b2 y equal to uh, c2 let's say right so you can think of this as you know trying to find the intersection point between two lines right you know if there are two lines in a plane either they intersect or they don't if they intersect they intersect at you know a point which is unique unless you know not only are they, if they are parallel and apart then they will never intersect that is the case of no solution but if they are parallel and coincident right they they in fact intersect everywhere right it is like a, it's a weird kind of intersection because they are basically the same there are two equations which lie on top two lines which lie on top of each other right so something similar happens when you have you know a larger dimension right you can think of some hyper uh, plane and how many of these hyper planes are intersecting and whether they intersect at the same point or if there are some of these which are coincident which is when you have infinitely many solutions with you know the number of degrees of freedom depends on how many of them are overlapping and so on right you can imagine this up to three dimension it's easy to imagine but beyond three dimensions it's not something that you can imagine geometrically but you know it's really the same idea which which extends and then we have seen that algebraically using you know these uh, you know, the idea of a rank or the idea of the determinant if it's a square system and so on we have a you know prescription for telling the what is the fate of a system of linear equations right so now we will uh, conclude this this this, this, uh, this discussion on systems of linear equations but we will use some of these properties and connect back to linear dependence, linear independence, and then go back to vector spaces. That's the path ahead. Thank you. That's all for this lecture.